Hi, welcome to SDI TV. Today we're here to talk about a Razor motor mount plate. Um, this will fit XP 1000s and 900s. The reason this was developed was to keep the transmission and the motor in place and in line. What happens over time from a belt pulling, it'll pull the motor and transmission together and then your center distance is incorrect. What also happens is, is the motor and transmission only supported on the outside. Um, hitting big GLs, even landing from jumps, hitting big bumps. It wants to go and force the motor and the transmission down. And with these bolts um, being so long and only in single shear, it allows it, the, the whole thing to flex down and it basically makes your uh, clutch and your belt alignment incorrect. So we've developed this bolt-on plate um, that goes right here. And what that does is it puts in double shear. We actually have um, knurling put into the back and set screws. So it basically locks it into place. So once you get the clutch alignment set perfectly, it doesn't move. All right, let's get the plate installed. Um, to get to this point, obviously the motor's out of the car. We made it easy on ourselves for this video. Um, we have our clutch alignment tool on. If you have any questions on how to get to this point with the motor in your car, please watch our clutch alignment tool and that'll help you out. Um, so basically we got the inside cover off and um, we're gonna go ahead and loosen off and remove the, um, the um, bolts for the, um, that hold the engine and the transmission together on the clutch side. I'm just going to go ahead and pop these up with an impact. As you can see how much the motor uh, settled when we pulled those out. We actually already have the back side loose. It's a lot easier if you leave the back side tight while you first install this. Um, go ahead. I'm going to grab my motor plate. Now the motor plate's got the three small set screws and the one big one. Make sure that the three small set screws are inside of the aluminum. Don't have them sticking out. And make sure that the big set screw is only sticking out a quarter inch at the most. So what we're going to do is grab our two um, longer bolts. Um, and these are going to be the ones that replace the back two bolts. I always like to put a little bit of grease on the threads. It just will help keep everything, um, it just helps keep the threads and the aluminum lasting longer. Um, before you put on the plate also, the two holes that are in the front here, you need to check to make sure that they're threaded. Most Polaris's, these are already threaded, but we have ran across a few that there is not threads inside, and you will have to tap those to an M10 by 125. If you need that tool, we have a tool here that we can um, supply for you. Um, so make sure that's blown out clean so that there's no dirt or debris. We're going to go ahead and grab our plate and um, get it started. Now, because we, our whole motor was loose, this is going to be a little more of a struggle. Um, you're going to have to just um, maneuver it so that you can get everything in line and started. Sometimes uh, what helps is, is just turning the um, turning the bolts and turning them in slowly. I'm just going to go ahead and do this by hand, just to get everything to line up. Uh, the stock heads that pull out is a 15 millimeter socket. The new bolts that are a little bit longer is actually a 17. Ten. Um, we're going to go ahead and. Um, you're going to tighten them up and then just back them off. You want them just barely snug and uh, that will help us so we can align the clutch tool better. And barely snug. And then what we're going to do is um, go ahead, grab our um, front two bolts. And we're going to do the same thing. And uh, we want to put these in, but almost loose this is going to be the last thing that we tighten but at least you can get the um, plate lined up I actually got to loosen it off a little bit more just so we can move the plate into position So 
that what we're going to do is uh, turn these in. You want to leave these fairly loose. You just want to get them deep enough so that they um, are flush. All right. Now at this point, we can go ahead and loosen off the four bolts on the back side plate. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and um, put our clutch alignment tool on. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that real fast. We're gonna get this thing back in alignment. So right now to put the bar on, we're gonna go ahead and um, grease the shafts again. Remember, we have a whole video on just the clutch alignment tool and how to use it. Uh, now that everything's loose, this is going to be um, a little bit tougher to line up and you're sometimes going to need to use a um, hammer to get everything to get these on. So get that started. We're going to go ahead and just use a rubber mallet and just tap these on. Let's go right in the middle. And remember, we want to get the um, first one on right to the very end of the, um, the uh, motor side shaft here. And usually the second one is a little bit easier to get on, but you still might have to force it a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and tap this guy on. Grab our, uh, grab our little impact. And we're going to just go ahead and tighten the front one. You just want these good and snug. If you had to torque them, I'd go to about 18 foot pounds. All right, now that we've got that. Uh, we already have our motor wedged to try. It's the happy spot. What we're gonna need to do in your car is you use a pry bar and just work the uh, motor and the transmission until we get this back shaft to um, spin freely. Let's see how we're at. And we gotta just work it a little bit. What we don't wanna do is pry on the drive shaft at all. You want to find a different spot on the motor and on the transmission just to work it till we can find a happy spot. So I need to just go a little bit higher with our wedge. And let's just see if we get that. And see now this is spinning freely. Um, as soon as this spins freely, you know it's in line. So we're gonna go ahead and now we're gonna tighten up the back ones right here. Now that this is locked into place, we can go ahead and start torquing the motor and transmission together because it's holding it right where it needs to be. Um, what I'm going to do is just by hand here, we're going to go and uh, tighten the rear two bolts first. What works best is a short socket with a long extension. And grab the torque wrench. Um, the player spec for this is um, 64 foot-pounds. We only recommend 50. We've had bolts strip out the aluminum casting, and with our plate, it only needs to be torqued to 50, um, which is more normal for this type of size of bolt. So we're just going to go ahead and torque the bottom one. There we go. Now, before you go and torque the front two, just because the motor plate is in the way, I actually recommend going and torquing the back ones, which we're gonna have to flip the motor around to show you. Um, all right, now that we're ready to do the back side of the motor, um, basically it's this junction plate. Um, the player's method is, is we wanna go and do this one here first, and we're gonna do it at five foot pounds. So you're basically just snugging it up and pulling it into the motor. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start torquing this, which make sure at the top here it's all the way in. I sometimes recommend just snugging this one up, not even the five foot pounds, but just make sure this back bolt snugged up. But now for the real torque spec, is actually at 44 foot pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and reset up our torque wrench and basically this bottom one first. Then this top one went this way. 
And then finally the first one will be short. Now what that does is this plate has got oblong holes. So we have everything lined up this way. Now it holds this back side of the motor into place. Now we're going to flip it back around to, um, to uh, pull off our clutch tool. All right, now that we have the back side tight, everything's torqued, uh, we can go ahead and remove our clutch tool. As I said, whenever you're removing this, you always want to go and just make sure that this back um, shaft spins freely. Um, so we're good to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the rest of this. Like I said, these should pull off. They should go on with a hammer, but they should come off by hand nice and easy. Put that out of the way. Now that we have access, we can get set our set screws and we can go ahead and torque our um, front bolts. Go ahead, grab our 17 once again, which you don't even need an extension now. Go ahead and just torque these to the 44. It will feel spongy because the uh, plate is um, sinking into the um, aluminum, basically that Merlin. All right, now that we got that in place and torqued, um, we can go ahead and set these set screws. And what the set screws do, it just adds extra bite so that this cannot shift. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tighten the small M8s first. If you, did need, if you do want to torque this, uh, the torque spec on this is going to be about 12 foot pounds. But, you know, you can just go and feel it with hand. You just want to get it in there so it's got a nice bite. And that's using a um, five millimeter Allen. And the M8 here is using a six millimeter. And you're gonna go ahead and just get that to work. All right, now the plate is on and uh, everything's torqued, lined up. Your clutch alignment tool is done. You can just go ahead and put the rest of your car back together. If you need to see how to finish removing the um, tools, watch the video about the clutch alignment tool. Thank you.